You probably already noticed the little collars around our tomato plants and our pepper plants. Those are made out of paper and plastic cups. So today I thought I would just show you how I make those and talk about them a little bit. The reason I put little collars around our plants is to protect them from cutworms. And as far as making the collars go, they're pretty easy to make. I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You just cut the bottom off of a cup. And I like to start a hole with the scissors and make sure you don't have your hand on the inside when you do that or it'll poke a hole in your finger. But I just cut up towards the center of a cup. If you cut down too low or too high, the cup will either be too short or too narrow at the bottom. So I kind of try to stay in the middle and just cut all the way around. And when you're done, you have one collar made. We're trying to get by with making things with what we have on hand. And we just happen to have some paper cups and some plastic cups, so I'm making some out of both. If you're wondering about the durability of the wax paper cups, they actually last better than you might think. Cutworms do their damage by wrapping around the stem of a plant and then eating their way all the way through the stem. And when you find it the next morning, it'll just be lying on the ground like somebody cut it off with a pair of scissors. It can be pretty frustrating. That's why I'm going to get ahead of the game and try to create a barrier so they can't reach the plants. Besides building collars, it also helps if you weed your garden and remove any debris in the area that uh, cutworms can hide under. Because I garden using wood chips as mulch, removing all the debris in my garden is impossible. Since I garden with wood chips, the first thing I do is push all the wood chips away from the plant so I won't accidentally put the collar over a cutworm. If you don't put the collar on at the time you plant the tomato or pepper, you might have to loosen the soil around it, and that's what I do with the old screwdriver. Once I have the soil loosened up, I just simply slip the collar over the plant and I found that it's easier to get it to go down into the soil if you kind of twist it back and forth. Once I have the collar in place, I like to pack the dirt just a little bit on the inside of the cup and the outside of the cup. And then I have one more thing that I do just for insurance. Since cutworms sometimes hide in the soil, it's always possible to put the collar right over a cutworm. And to take care of that problem, if it occurs, I use diatomaceous earth. This package came with its own applicator inside, which made it pretty handy. Diatomaceous earth is the fossilized remains of tiny aquatic organisms and is ground up into a very fine powder. When working with diatomaceous earth, you should be careful not to inhale it because it is an abrasive, so it can damage your lungs if you inhale too much. Wearing a respirator is one way to solve that problem. It only takes a few seconds to apply and it will protect your plant against other insects also. Once I have the collars in place and the diatomaceous earth applied, I move some of the chips back in place around the cup. Another way to make collars for your seedlings is to grow them in toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes. Each paper towel tube can be cut up into two or three seed starting pots. You close off the bottom of a tube, you just simply make some cuts around one end of the tube and then fold the flaps over. That creates a small seed starting pot, which can be used to start your seedlings in until they're large enough to transplant out in the garden. Since the tubes are made out of paper, they're biodegradable and you can put the entire thing down in the ground when you plant. And it has its own built-in cutworm collar. Another trick that some people use is to put a toothpick beside the stem of the plant. Here, instead of using a toothpick, I used a piece of a wooden skewer. It's meant to keep the cutworm from wrapping itself around the plant in the first place. And instead of using just one toothpick, you could use two. Instead of using toothpicks, some people use nails to serve the same purpose. 
Be sure to let us know what your favorite way to deal with cutworms is down in the comments. And if you're just now finding this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.